cassette number 12 from The Waiting on God, held in Jeffersonville, Indiana, July 2 through 4, 1981. We continue with the Friday evening service, July 3rd. Just wait on the Lord and trust Him. And keep praying. God will make it plain in time. But don't press for the answers. See, most of us want to press a little. We, we just can't do that. It isn't, it isn't the way. Because that is not trusting. That's a trustless spirit. Well, you say, we've got to know. Oh, no. No, we just wait till God leaves. Yes, but there's deadlines. Well, just have to go through with it. I know what it is to just wait till the midnight hour and they're right up to the time that they're backing up to get my furniture and I still don't know where I'm going. And they'd get after me because I didn't know where I was going. I said, well, I've got the money to pay you. And that's all you're interested in. I said, I'm just trusting Jesus. We trust him. We don't press for the answers. We just simply wait on him and not be negligent. Not be negligent. Be faithful, but don't press to get what we want when we think we ought to get it right away, today or tomorrow, at least to the end of this week. We, don't, we just simply wait on God until it comes. So he, and he usually reveals what is his will when you least expect it. God's will is not released and revealed at our time. Now this is something to write down because uh, we can forget this. God usually doesn't reveal his will when we desire it. Now, one thing I found out by being with you that you don't constantly sit around and try to find out things. Oh, no, no. See, oh, I have no. a feeling that people think that you like to find out things. Oh. Find out things. You just trust, praise oh, God. Yeah. Praise, praise the Lord. God. Lord when Lord. you're not thinking about praise it, the Lord. Mm, oh, there it comes. There it is. But I didn't know that when I first met you. No. no I didn't know. Oh, no, I didn't lived, know. When I lived with you, I found out that yeah. you didn't try to find out anything. No, 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 no. Just, just praise the Lord and love everybody. Yeah. Just follow Jesus and rejoice and witness yeah. and tell what God's been doing. And, 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 and right then when I said that, he said, I'm going to help you more. Oh, <laughs> see, see, the more I share about how Jesus leads and blesses, he just yeah. helps me and helps yeah. me and yeah. encourages me. And I just like right. a little child, right. I'm just so thrilled over it. He reveals things right in the middle of the sharing. Oh, just like you. that. No. Just like that. No. When you're thinking about it. Oh, yes. Come back up. Well, it's a wonder story. Yeah. Just like I was sharing with Richard and Mary, I told them that, uh, uh, Robert and Dorothy and I was at the cafeteria. We had fellowship that came in from Iowa. We had fellowship in the Holy Ghost. We had such a great time, and we got a long fight, and I got to the door to leave, and the Lord spoke to me. He stopped me right there and told me about an accident. With Robert and Dorothy was, was coming up. They were going into Michigan, and the Lord, and I was sharing this story with uh, Richard and Mary just a day or two after that. I remember, we were out the French steam. And... Uh, so just as I got to the door of the cafeteria, well, that's when Jesus told me about that they were going to be in this accident. We had to pray them out of it. And, uh, oh, the Lord just blessed me wonderfully. We prayed, and God said he's going to take them right through it. Well, they went up and went with this pastor, and he was driving on the ice. And he was going just a little bit faster, and Robert felt like was safe. Seemed like it's just, just a little bit, a mile or two or three. And here they were coming down this slick pavement, and here came a truck, and it was just coming this way, across the way, like this. Can you see it? And when it went in, they were right in between. They went right around it like this, and just shaved them on it, and just went right on. Oh, she said, this is it. This is what Jesus told his servant. Praise God, praise God, praise God. And she rejoiced. See, they were just right in the curl there. See, God helped us to the split second to pray them in there. And I was sharing with Richard and Mary, and instantly God told me about an accident. You were going to be in just so many weeks. He told me where it would be. It would be eight to 900 miles north of you in Canada. And when I shared with Robert, he said he didn't know. He didn't say anything. He just listened to me. 
because he didn't have anything scheduled in Canada. Would be home at that time, on the schedule. But just as that time that Jesus told me, they called him from Canada and wanted him to come up there for a meeting or two, two meetings. Yes, sir. Three months after Jesus revealed, and I told him he got the invitation to go, and it was a, it was a time, it was the mileage. And when we prayed, I said, oh, you're not to go. He said, I received the witness of the Holy Spirit. I'll just cancel the law. He missed it. He missed death right there. God spared us. I asked you if I could go by plane, bus, or any other way. You said, no, don't go. Because I called and I said, is this the revelation? Well, I was to start home the very day that you said the revelation would happen. I'd have been starting home that very day. Yes, sir. And you said, that's the place. That's the place. Don't go. So I, well, that thrilled me. And I, what I told you, it thrilled you. Yes, sir. I, yeah, it I thrilled you right over the witness. phone. Yes, sir. Yeah, you received the witness. Yes, the Holy sir. Spirit. <laughs> oh, because Jesus was so merciful. Yes, sir. Now, see, we weren't thinking about the revelation. We weren't thinking about it. You said sometimes what we're sharing with one, another happened. So I had to document that. And uh, it came right there. Richard and Mary, you remember that. Oh, we had quite a time. I couldn't even finish the first one when he told me. So I didn't get the story finished till I got through the, this second revelation. So don't press for the answer. Just trust it. Does this help us? Amen. To know God's will. Amen. To understand God's will. And always remember this. Oh, this is great. This is wonderful. In my heart, I don't know what you're going to tell. Always when God reveals to one servant his will, it witnesses it to all servants that know God. Well, that is so exciting. When God reveals any part of his will to any one of his servants, he will witness to all of his servants that walk with him that have the gift. See, that's so great. Oh, that's wonderful. Someone begins to tell me what God reveals, you know, over, and before they get their mouth open. I've already received the witness of the Holy Spirit before they can ever start to tell me. Through Jesus' help. <laughs> Isn't it wonderful? It really is. See, God wants to lead all men by his Holy Spirit, but it means we need to be born again, cleansed and filled with the Holy Spirit, waiting on God, loving him. Now, you see, if I don't love God with all my heart, then I won't receive a revelation of God. See, if I don't love God with all my heart and all people, if I don't love all people as Jesus loves me, then I won't receive the revelation of Jesus because it violates the law of love. Or you want to write that down. Those of you who may know it, you won't need to, but it's good to know that. See, God reveals himself to those that love and follow Jesus. The secret of the Lord is with those that fear God. And to think that every revelation God gives witnesses to all the saints that have the gift of discernment. That touches me now. Does that, did you touch your heart a little? That's exciting. Amen. See, this is like a school of the prophets. School of the pilgrims. Isn't it? Like the school, the Sunday school class. God, it's wonderful. Sunday school class is good if God's in it, but if he isn't, it can do more harm and a church can do good for a long time. It's serious. Sunday school is serious. If somebody gets their own plans in it and their own ideas, they'll do harm to unbelievers, to people they're trying to win, and they'll lose them. Can you hear me? Did you know that? Have you ever had that revelation? That's why you have to be awful careful that the right teacher is there because if the teacher gives his idea instead of the Holy Spirit, look out. Look out, you may wound a few sheep and lambs. See, somebody gives the instruction, God's an idea that hurts people. 
We can't do that. We've got to be sure we're in divine order, not to get ourselves in the way. That's the carnal of us that wants to take over and say this and this. God wants us to have wisdom so that he can check us when we began to say something. Just like a while ago, I wanted to tell you something. He said, no, 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 no. I stopped right then. I couldn't tell you. He said, that doesn't work here. He said, that doesn't work here. If it weren't for the check of the Spirit, you see, we, we'd get into trouble. And we must wait on the Lord and let him guide us. Isn't this great? Oh, Isn't this encouraging? Is. So don't go out and just try. Just wait on the Lord and just die out. Just rejoice. Trust him. Pray. Read his word. Hold it in our hearts. Cherish it. <laughs> See, these are secrets in the universe. Secrets of life. And it's all in simplicity. This is all so little children can understand it. See, none of this isn't complicated. This is simple, isn't it? Isn't it amazing how simple this is? It isn't, it isn't complicated because God doesn't work in complexity. He works in simplicity. Jesus leads in little minute ways, little ways, way down here. Man wants to get great things. No, God does it just so differently. Usually. Generally. So let your heart have faith. Have faith. You receive faith as you wait on God and hear his word, commune with him, and then obey him by trusting. I think we've had a wonderful class here, the 10 minutes. I thought we were the last 10 minutes, besides the previous hour or so. So we're in debt to him. Continue to pray, will you, for us, each one of us? Because God loves all of us just the same. Our churches need encouragement, all of our pastors, all the people everywhere. They need encouragement, they need love. There are many ways that we can know what is of God and who is of God, certainly by Christ-like characteristics and by the witness of the Holy Spirit. But um, I remember when I met you 10 years ago or so, that uh, the first night that I met you, I was most persuaded, I believe, by that you were a man and a woman of God uh, by the fact that you were here in this, uh, we were in a little church, Brother Jim, down in uh, West Huntington. Now Canova. in Canova. Yes, Canova. And, uh, well, it just seemed so obvious to me that God was working uh, with you, that you were unusual people with wonderful innate abilities, and, uh, and God was working with you. And... I said to myself, now these people either have to be horribly deluded or they really have to be trying to follow and obey God. And I think one of the great testimonies to the fact that you've obeyed God, uh, if we have any struggle with, with any of this, dear ones, uh, if we could consider how wonderful is the desire to do God's will for servants to know that they have a certain responsibility and calling in life and have a doors of opportunity seemingly open to them down through the years. Now, if you couldn't know that, uh, historically, you ought to be able to tell it just because they're uh, unusually 
attractive and, and gifted people. Just in worldly terms, they are. They can do a lot of things that attract attention and uh, that could open doors. Well, to me, one of the great testimonies about these servants' desire to do God's will is the fact that as doors opened uh, through the years, if the Holy Spirit didn't operate, didn't witness to it, they simply didn't do it. Now, I would simply ask you, and I'm not trying to cast any reflection on any other ministry in any way, but ask yourself this question, and you'll have to do some surmising and speculating. Could you, could you comfortably suspect that most servants who felt that they had a calling in life given a, a, an opportunity down the, the trail of their ministry that seemed like it was going to open up the very door to let them realize what they're calling, uh, to realize the calling that was upon their life, how many do you suppose would not say glory to God and run right through the door and say God provided the way? Now these servants have said, Jesus, we're going to trust you to witness to us what's in order and what's not in order. That's what he's been telling us about. So he didn't. So, so there have been doors of opportunity down through the years, and uh, they've but they've tried to obey God. And when the Lord didn't witness that they were to go through that door, that that might have put them in in uh, other means of ministry today. But uh, that's all in God's hands. But, but uh, the point I want to make is, is that they have tried to obey God, and even if it meant continuing just to minister in little places, in little ways. And, of course, that's really where the kingdom operates to, for the most part anyway. Uh, he can operate in the big things, but I've heard you say over and over again, uh, when folks have talked about big things, uh, I've, I've heard you, I've watched you, I've heard you listen, but, uh, and, and then I've heard you respond sometimes, well, God operates, he can work in the little things. And uh, was this meeting here to, tonight is, see, this is testimony that God can work in little things. Oh, this may not be a, uh, obviously it's not a crowd of, uh, of 50,000 in a big crusade, but, uh, but it is a wonderful testimony how God has, without program, has reached out here, sent over here, sent over here, got this one over here, and brought us all together. And it remains to be seen what God is going to do. Brother Helm, I, for one, am trusting, I'm praying for you that God will help you to be a man of single-minded purpose, a man of singleness of vision. I'm convinced that the truly great men and women uh, through history have been men of single and oh, women of single-minded oh, purpose. In my heart. For the most part, viewed by the world as misfits, uh, children, just not up to par one way or another. Uh, Socrates looked for someone who knew he was nothing. Do you know what the testimony of one uh, affluent Athenian of that day was? Oh, I read it in a commentary not too long ago, and it, oh, it, it stirred me wonderfully. He said, when I listen to Aristotle, when I read Plato, I appreciate the great wisdom and knowledge. But when I hear Socrates, I weep. And Socrates was a man of singleness of vision and purpose. Don Quixote might have charged windmills, and he might have looked foolish to the world, but he had something beating in his breast that God would that we all had, and that was a single purity of vision. To dream the impossible dream. This is my quest to follow that star, no matter how hopeless, no matter how far. And I know 
If I only be true to this glorious quest, then my soul will lie peaceful and still when I am laid to my rest. And the world will be better for this, that one man scorned and covered with scars still strove with his last ounce of courage to reach the unreachable star. I'm praying God will help you to keep that singleness of vision. I shared a little bit of this one time in, in your dining room. And I remember uh, there, there's a lovely uh, crystal, cut crystal chandelier hanging over their table in the, in the dining room. And the light was hitting it, and, oh, this the light was going off in various directions. You know, they're multifaceted, and that was beautiful. But, you know, uh, right while I was trying to share this, it just, it just occurred to me that I saw the light going out in all directions. It was that, that was so magnificent, but you take one little diamond that is perfect in clarity and perfect in cut, and it may be ever so tiny, but when a little ray of light hits it, it explodes in all the colors of the spectrum. It doesn't take a great, wonderful, massive chandelier to give off the light when there's a, when there's a purity and a singleness of purpose in doing, and that's in Amen. doing God's will, yes, that's Brother it. Helm. That's so that's, 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 what I, that's one of the ways I want to pray for you, pray that God will help you never to get swayed, right. never to, to, uh, to leap through, right. run through a door right. of opportunity if God's, if God's not in it. True. Now, if the Lord wants you in crusades with 50,000 people, wonderful. If the Holy Spirit witnesses, but if he doesn't, I'm trusting God will help you to be faithful in the little things. I tell you, if we have to charge windmills with you and be a fool to the rest of the world, by God's grace, we want to have the courage to do it, Brother Helm, and look like an idiot and a fool if necessary. But I believe, but I believe that one of these days, God is going to prove that the, the knight dressed up in the rusty armor on a clackety broken down horse charging after windmill was the one who was right after all by God's grace and mercy oh it's important it is important to do God's will it's all that counts nothing else I saw it very clear near the river of death if you ever get near death you'll see that all that is, is God's will in Jesus Christ. It's so marvelous. So precious. Remember the service now in the morning. Let us stand for the closing prayer. I said let us stand for the closing prayer. And the Lord said wait just a moment. And the Holy Spirit said wait just a moment. So there's a song. So I went through the book and he showed me this right here. The voice of God is calling. It summons unto men as once he spoke in Zion, so now he speaks again. See him number 192. The Red Book. The Red Book 192. That just fits what we've been in, doesn't it?
Mark would have planned this program, tried to find the hymn of the hundreds and the thousands that's been written. Where in the world would you find a hymn that would cover where we've been on for three hours? Oh, think of it. Where would we find a hymn that would cover it like this? Oh, were you thrilled? Oh, I was so thrilled. It's so wonderful. It's just as wonderful this hymn is as what we've been hearing about doing God's will. It just covered it. Oh, I had to marvel at the Lord God of hosts. He said, don't dismiss. He said, there's a song. Black book or the red book? Red book. Gets me right there. See, he tells me my heart. Oh, there it is. The voice of God is calling. So now he speaks again. Covered all the territory. So miraculously and marvelously. Oh, I hope you'll just write this down in your heart. Make a believer out of it. It's him. The Stephen's written. When he penned this hymn, way back. Isn't that something? Way back there. See, it could be that his inspiration in that hour was here. See, this hymn was in it right here. This fit it right here. If this hymn ever fit an hour before, it is now. Is it thrilling that he could tell me here after three and a half hours or whatever it is? Two and a half hours he could tell us. Here is the hymn. And this hymn, I, ne I never knew this hymn. I never saw this hymn before. I've heard the tune, but not the words. And it's just what we were talking about. Sharing about his kingdom. It's exciting, isn't it? Amen. To think if a music committee had tried to find the hymn and worked for hours and days and weeks and months to try to get it for the third day of July, 1981. On the message. Of course, we didn't know what the message would be. Here it is. Isn't this wonderful? It is wonderful. It makes me very thankful. Please, as we meditate upon this, that we will give God glory and honor. Praise his name. Praise his name.
sing that when I was a boy. And go to prayer meeting, you know, back in the 20s. And be singing that song. Because it has the message of trusting Jesus. That is all. It's trusting and obeying Jesus. I'm so thankful for all of you here. And you were all so kind and so quiet, so cooperative, so thoughtful, so gracious, praying, trusting. Appreciate this. Precious ones coming in while you were playing were very quiet. It seemed to me like they didn't talk a lot to one another. They were just trying in their heart to pray that our hearts would be pure as he wants us to be pure in heart. Let this mind be in us that is also in Christ Jesus. And we can't come less in that perfect life if we have the mind of Christ. And yet we have to be very careful and cautious and walk humbly and softly before him in the beauty of his holiness and righteousness. Praise the Lord. Thank you for the beautiful music. Do you want to play one more or is that enough? Did you have one more on your heart? Is there one more on your soul? fine, but if there is, you see, we don't want to miss the leading of the Holy Spirit. Praise the Lord. So thankful. Yes. Well, he did. Well, good. Yes, well, just, just render that now. Present it. Jesus, Jesus just gave her a song this past week. He just gave it to her. And she said, it might be all right for now. I said, oh, please. Our hearts are crying out to Jesus to be pure and holy in him and to praise him, have a heart full of praise, thanksgiving. the Lord, you're giving him thanks for helping us, leading us, directing us, and you're thanking him for strength, for wisdom and knowledge. While she's playing, you're thanking him for him, for himself, for God in Christ Jesus, for his love to us, for the Holy Spirit he sent here to guide us and to direct us so that we would do exactly God's will, no more and no less. And you're thanking him about that, aren't you, in your heart? This is something within us that we want to praise him while she's playing. Or take this headache away from someone. They have a headache. Behold, be healed, be healed in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. Thank you. Would be all right to see you. If you please, that would be wonderful. Thank you.
We've got to wake up, we've got to wake up, wake us up, oh Lord, it's time to wake up. Yes, yes. Oh, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord, Jesus gave it to her. Oh, and that's precious. Really, really, it's about the kingdom of God. About really putting Jesus first. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise God, from whom all blessings flow. Hallelujah. Just think of it. Isn't it wonderful? Oh, that was so good. I wanted to hear it again. Is it possible? No, possible. Possible? No. It's possible. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now the only way that you know is that you pray and pray, and then the Holy Spirit, you get in tune with God, and as you keep your mind on Jesus, pleading his precious blood, then as you pray, the Holy Spirit teaches you in time how to discern God's will that's in the entire heart. And we trust him. And don't be in a hurry and oppressed, just simply trust him. Thank you. of the age coming to the close of time and may be in a while maybe a short while because no one knows when Jesus is coming but according to the signs of the time it's at hand mm -hmm. and therefore we want to really waken because the disciples went to sleep in the garden of Gethsemane when Jesus requested they watch with him and yet the ordinary church were about three times more asleep than they were, mm -hmm. spiritually speaking. Because we're so taken up in the life of self and planning of earth, rather than the spiritual alertness of the will of God to follow what Jesus says and what God directs. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this beautiful number. Thank you, Lord, for the Holy Spirit, Heavenly Father, that you've sent here to teach us of thy will, to guide us into all truth. And that uh, we all will hold steady in the place where we are until thee leads and witnesses and guides any further direction. <clears throat> that we may be in thy divine order faithful in our Nineveh and not make a choice for Tarsus because most all in the flesh will go to Tarsus instead of Nineveh unless we've died sufficiently we see that to do what thee wills for us to do it's so urgent and to hear thy voice and to follow Jesus, follow thee, Jesus. 
follow thee, Savior, here, what thee, Jesus, would have us to do. Thanksgiving and praise. Searching what, or what matter of time, the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. 1 Peter 1, 11. Searching what, or what matter of time, the Spirit of Christ, which was in them, did signify. When it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow. The aloneness of Christ, Jesus our Savior, the sufferings that Jesus the Christ experienced, was forsaken and crucified. And then, and the glory that should follow. The glory of God in Christ Jesus that should follow. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, <clears throat> but unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven. Which things the angels desire to look into. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. See, in that area it's very delicate and very important to the body because unless every part is just right, it's very difficult to function in walking or reproduction. And it's of the utmost importance to, to walk with God. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. That's connection with Christ. And this is a vital, precious experience. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. That, that is in the area that is very, very significant in the walking with God. Because we must have the mind of Christ. Let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Now, when we have the mind of Christ, and the mind of Christ is given to those who lose all, give all, surrender all, love him and walk in a spiritual balance to do only God's will and not become sidetracked into uh, some off parts that gets us into the things that grieve him. But he said, gird up the loins of your mind. That's within the being of the soul, gird them up, gird them up, be well protected, well held together, well held together in God, in Christ, by the Holy Ghost. Gird up the line of your mind, get his garment, his love, his communion, his fellowship around and about and through this very delicate, this very important part of the soul and the mind. <clears throat> that God can have preeminence in you and me. That we keep in step with Jesus, not too fast or too slow. And only as we gird up the loins of our mind and be in holy giving over to God in Christ Jesus, we'll be aware of the mind of God, the will of God. Because the will of God flows through Jesus by the Holy Spirit. And God reveals his will 
as we walk with Jesus, as Jesus speaks to us by the Holy Spirit. Gird up the loins of your mind. And this part of the body of the soul, this part of the mind, this part of the inner being is where we either we sit down, uh, we cannot walk, or we do walk. And it has been God's will for man to walk with him since creation, but seldom been done. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, the holy wrapping, the holy protecting grace of the sacred blood, the mighty word, the truth of his holiness. Gird up. Be sure that it, you are it's gathered around you in humility and in caution, not to attract attention or not to try to get someone to think that you're religious, but simply walk in humbleness of spirit as Jesus leads us. Because anyone that's led of the Holy Spirit goes only as Jesus leads. That's usually very slow. Only rarely does he lead us otherwise. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. To the mind, the soul, the heart, and the spiritual body. And then he said, be sober. It tells us so many times to be sober. That's the opposite of foolishness and jesting and trying to attract attention and trying to express and display our ego in some kind of a prideful way in order to get people to, to laugh or to be amused. He said, be sober. That means if you ever get a glimpse of eternity, if you ever are able to get a glimpse of the importance of God's will, uh, the more of the glimpse of God's will you have, the sober, the more sober you are. Because this life is so sober, because one word that is not God-ordered, we will be held in judgment for it. By your words, you will be justified, and by your words, you'll be condemned. So our words, we have to be very careful with our words. That's why we have to be cautious in conversation. And if we aren't sufficiently dead, we're likely to be a little on the foolish side. I'm teasing, and kidding. The more carnal we are, the more apt we are to do that the more cleansed the heart is, the less of it is an appearance or an evidence. Now Jesus, one writer said, they can't remember seeing Jesus laugh, but they do remember him weeping quite a lot. Now I'm not trying to go weeping uh, and cut off laughing. But I am bringing to your attention that a lot of people think that this life is a big laugh. But it isn't. This life is a serious journey. I'll come to that here. It's right here. It's very serious. Before the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I did not realize how serious this life was. Before we left all to go with God, I didn't realize and probably now have only just a slight comprehension. But the Bible says that we are to be sober. That means that we are to inwardly be extolling Christ of God and to be very careful in our conversation and our attitudes and motives so that within us there is that awesome there is that fear. There is that note of his divine majesty and of our limitations, inadequacies, our utter dependence upon him. 
When you get that vision, you don't have anyone to tell you to be sober. You say, but I like to have a great time. You'll have a greater time here than you can have in all the laughters of circuses and all the pleasures. It will do something within you that all the laughing that you ever heard in the world will not do. It touches me now. If you get where the Lord has brought his servant, you'll see it far surpasses anything that you ever had in the world by a long, 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 long way. And he said, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now you see, mourning means to do it in the spirit, not in a melancholy way, not in a fleshly way, not in a, in a distorted way, but in the spirit, in God. He said, Blessed are they that mourn, that is, they that have the vision of a lost world, they that see the futility of the will of man, the terrible emptiness of failing to put Christ first and go with God entirely. So he says, be sober. So when we are spiritually within us, aware of this urgent word of the Lord, we do not think it grievous because anyone that walks in this area is privileged through Christ if they'll walk slowly and humbly to see that this life is so serious that it's beyond uh, our words to tell how the precious seriousness mounts. And it's up like Great Pike's Peak of Revelation of its importance of being quiet before the Lord with carefulness. Now be sober, he said. And there are other scriptures, many others like this. But we will only do this as we gird up the loins of our mind will only do this as we walk in the will of God. If we're walking in the will of man, it's almost the reverse of this. And I want to tell you, I've, I've been having a wonderful time in my 40-some years. A wonderful time. I've never met anybody who's having a more wonderful time than I've had. Not because I've merited it, it's been God's gift. The joy that God has given me of walking with him, hearing him, tell me what to do and to do it by his grace. This is a great consolation, great fulfillment, great wonder, great marvel within your bosom that you can't tell your closest friend there's any words to tell it. It's as we walk in him in soberness and humility and with a contrite heart. You see, the nature of the earth is the opposite of this. Most all earthly entertainments, they think they have to have people that know how to crack jokes, give you funny stories. This is the, you know, about all earthly things, this is what people think. It's a fellow that can give you the stories that make you laugh. <coughs> funny stories. Humor story. They think it's great. See, most all this earth, the big percent. I wouldn't be surprised if it's 90, it's about 90, 96% of all people, they think this is great. If you can get someone to laugh and crack jokes and tell funny things, they say it relaxes you. Well, it's possible if it's in order. We're not cutting it all out, of course. But the tendency is to laugh and have a high whole time in this life. But this life is too serious. It doesn't mean that we can't have a great time of laughter. Oh, 
Have you ever seen God come on God's men and they just laugh and they laugh and the Holy Ghost? And it's just so great that you want everybody in on it. And while you're laughing in the Holy Ghost, you feel such peace and joy and love and holiness and purity and righteousness and wonderful things of grandeur of his marvelous majesty within you. So I'm not trying to keep us from laughing, but I am building up the sober thought. It's like that God wants us to be perfect as our Heavenly Father is perfect. That's God's will. Well, he wants us to be sober. They go together. They go together. So you don't have to work to do this when you walk with God. It's just natural. When you walk with God, these things are natural. They come from him into the trusting heart. Now, if the heart isn't trusting, then we don't experience it. Only the trusting heart, only the obedient heart will experience this. And you see, since creation, or since the fall, there has been very few in any age that actually, really, totally, wholeheartedly, continually, steadfastly obey God. In any and every age, only a few. Just a few. But that doesn't mean that that lets us out of it. It means that it's for God's will for us also that we be sober, to gird up the loins of our mind, that we rest on the promise, that we love as he loves. You see, it is automatic. When we walk with him, it's automatic to love all the people and to be sober. And to be cautious in all of our parts as we walk with God, as we listen to his voice, as we look after the poor and the needy and the orphans and the widows, that the widows be comforted this morning. That the widows be comforted. Receive thou the comfort of the Lord. Receive thou the comfort of the Lord, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Son of God, comforteth you. Well, I could just tell it's going right into their hearts now. The comfort of the Lord Jesus Christ comforts you. Oh, is that precious? Did you feel it? You, can you tell it? Oh, yes. The comfort of the Lord Jesus Christ go right into the widow's heart. God tells me about the needs of the widow and the orphans and the fatherless. See the father this morning. I'm going to ask Jesus, those of you who lost your father, you made it. You miss him so much. I'm going to ask him just to come real close to you. Just come real close, Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit, bless you, Jesus, to the fatherless. I lost their father and they miss him so much. I've never lost, I've never missed my father. You so covered me, I've never missed him. It's great times we had for 50 some years together. Never missed him. But now these dear ones that miss their father and most of all men and women miss their father, miss their mother. So I ask Father that you just come and they just feel like their arms are almost touching them. Like their bosom is just near to them, their sweetness, there's something in their face that no other man had to them. No other person looked like them in their eyes. Just come real close, oh Lord, in your sweetness and get your arms around them. Praise the Lord. Praise the Jesus. Isn't it wonderful how he did that? Isn't that wonderful? That's exciting. It really is. To think that God cares for the widows and the orphans and the fatherless. See, all men that walk with God are like that. They're like that. Let this headache be gone from you. Be thou delivered from this headache that's hurt in your head. In Jesus' name. For the glory of God. Isn't that precious? That Jesus grants us this wonderful presence. God just come. Isn't that wonderful Mark? Jesus has come down and just put your arms around you see and daddy's gone, your precious father preached the gospel's gone, but he just came and put his arms around you in the spirit, in his love. Jesus, comfort. That's it. See, I can see it on your face. Since his daddy's gone. 
Well, then we, we've been trying to be a daddy to him. I better love you now. You've come all the way from Oklahoma City. Come on up. I've got a hold of him yet. And his father's gone, so I've endeavored to take his place. And cannot be done, but only in Jesus. touches his heart. Oh, dear one. <laughs> I wish you could see his beautiful, handsome face, his eyes. Praise God. You and Dr. Spaulding are so much alike. Mm -hmm. and it's so wonderful to have you with us. Oh, I miss the fellowship with you. Oh, I, oh I'm, so, I'm so indebted to Jesus for this privilege of fellowship with you. As the Lord Jesus just now we pray thee and when he was Saudi Arabia and when he's other places that you just helped him, encouraged him, blessed him, protected him, taking care of all the various needs and given just such love and care. <laughs> See, while I'm loving you, I'm trusting Jesus to love all the fathers and the orphans. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Very sweet. The note that you sent me, yes, it was over there. Yes. It came just at the right time. Came just at the right time? Just think, God told me to write him in Saudi Arabia, and he said it came just at the right time. Mm -hmm. It's only by God's grace that that can happen. And only by God's grace, because ordinarily it doesn't get through like that. And most of the letters took two or three weeks to get there. Yes. And, and Joy can verify that. And yes. yours got there in two days. <laughs> Wonderful. Glory, 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 praise God. <laughs> father gone uh, 
it hard. Yes, yes. Really you're lonely, is. you miss mm -hmm. his love and that fellowship you had and his, his yeah. kindly spirit. And, mm -hmm. and you knew how yeah. you could have little talks and pray together. That's true. Yes. You miss true. that. I do. Yes, I miss yes. that. I really do. Yes. And uh, sometimes when the Lord leads, uh, I've just been, I've been learning from you, just watching. And uh, you said, don't press for it, just trust. Yeah. And I'm sitting there, Lord, it's hard to trust. <laughs> but I'm trying to. I'm, you're, I'm, you're, I'm you're trying to trust. I know. And uh, when the Lord comes yeah. uh, and teaches me, not new things, but things that the church has just forgotten. Yeah. Well, that's right. I, I start questioning, Lord, is this, I've never heard this before. I've never been taught this before in seminary. And last night was sermon number three that I needed. Oh. Remember I said I needed three sermons? Yes. And it was the waiting upon God in Scott Depot. Yes. It was sermon number one. Praise the Lord. I'm and then listening. sermon number two at Oilton, where we had a wonderful time. <laughs> oh, that was one of the most wonderful times. It couldn't be explained, the wonder of oh, that. I know. And then last night, I really had to press to get what you were talking about, about knowing the will of God. Yes, sir. And that was sermon number three. It's wonderful. Oh, it and is. I still don't understand it, but I'm going to try. You're that pressing the, for the mark the Lord for the will prize. Show me. Right. For the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Right. And I've been reading John Wesley a lot yes. since the last time we were together. Okay. And, uh, of course, I've read Andrew Murray and yes. Jowett and all those. That, yes. uh, Dad said, those are the people you're supposed to read about. And I, all of a sudden, the Lord said, this is what it's about. And I said, well, I need somebody to show me what it's about. And he brought you our way. Isn't that wonderful? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> if we hadn't left all to go with Jesus, we would, we never, would, have, found we would have missed all, most everyone in this room, right. yeah. and wherever he has led me over the world, parts of the earth. Mm -hmm. It's been a great privilege, oh, romance, true. thrills, and adventure mm -hmm. to follow. Last night when you were sh sharing with us how the Lord just leads one person to another person yes. to another person, yes. I, I was just marveling at that. Because oh, I, I a lot of people that. don't really understand what takes place when that happens. Oh, oh, that that, 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 that really gets me with power. Well, if everyone gets a taste of that, they want to want to walk with God. Oh, that's true. Because see, there is something that prevents all men and women from walking with Him. There's a power of the earth, of the weakness of flesh, that prevents men and women from walking if if they don't persevere through that veil, through that place where darkness holds us from His shining face, mm -hmm. and I have to persevere all the time. And the farther I walk with him, the harder it becomes, mm -hmm. because the power Ooh, of the that hell. touched me yeah. when you said that, yeah. because it's that's harder. hard to do. Yes, that's right. But but it's great. Because we want to go on feeling, Yes. and it's not feeling. No, not feeling at all, no. I have to press now much more uh, than I did uh, two or three years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's a continual pressing to be in God's will and to do what he says. Because the flesh is weak, and the earth pulls strong upon man. And it's as we maintain spiritual balance that we follow Jesus. And pray, and pray, and rejoice, and rejoice, and obey every leading of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. See, the devil don't want us to do that. Oh, that's true. And if you aren't taught that, that's right. we're not you disciplined. You just don't know. No, we don't know. Mm -hmm. We can be told this over and over and over and still do not know. Mm -hmm. Do not even hear it. Well, I'm trusting that the Lord will get that into my heart so I can, you know, not understand it with my mind, but no, with my heart. With your heart. Right. That's, that's, right. that's very important. Right. That's very important. It really is. And to maintain that spiritual balance after we get there mm -hmm. so that we don't go too fast. Right. And get that's off my the problem. spiritual air. Yeah, that's my problem. I'm, well, it's all our I'm problem. Saying, Lord, I want... All that. I want to know about you more. And he has to slow down. Yes, <laughs> it's go way down. Yeah. So that we will not uh, get into a certain area that many have gotten into spiritual air when they came to this area. <clears throat> we have walked softly and very carefully mm -hmm. so that the Holy Spirit may lead us in Jesus. Mm -hmm. 
as we follow Jesus, yeah. our Savior. <laughs> by faith. Mm -hmm. See, I have to walk more by faith now than I ever did. And all the wonderful things he's done for me, I have to walk by faith more than ever before. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah. I have to battle the principalities of the air much more. R rulers of darkness of the world, spiritual weakness, high places are raging in the air to keep all the people from this place that God has destined them to be. Well, with Jesus' return coming closer and yes. closer, he's working harder and harder. The devil is going about as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Mm -hmm. So he's wanting to devour us with different little ways. Mm -hmm. And we must uh, just go slowly so that... Because he won't allow us to err if we'll go slow enough to listen. Mm -hmm. That's a, that's a lesson we all need to learn yeah. right there. We go slow enough with him. He will not let us err. He will guide us into all truth. Right. But the weakness is that when we do get a taste of the wonder of this, we go too rapidly. Mm -hmm. And we try this and it's off here and it's off there and it's gone. Right. We must go very slowly with him. Yes. Is that precious that he would be so merciful to us <laughs> like that? I was thinking when we ask you to pray whether we should leave the, the church in Florida or not. Yeah. That was a hard decision. A we, decision. we really didn't want to leave. No, oh no, oh no, no, no. Because no, the no. people were so precious there. Yes, sir. And besides that, we didn't want to leave you. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were there. <clears throat> not all the time. But it was kind of looking for you coming back. Time. At least you'd call. Yeah. You know. Get in touch with it. And uh, I said, I don't know if I really want to go because it, it's, it's been a goal in my life as far back as I can remember. It's God's call. Yes. And I said, No, Lord, that's going to be hard. Hard on God's call. Because yes. I don't want to leave Dad. I've lost my Dad. I don't want to lose him again. And. Uh, when you said we were supposed to go, it was really, really hard. It was a death. It was a death. It was. It was dying out. Was but the Lord was teaching us. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> then when we got with you again, He gave us such a great blessing. Oh, I know. One of the most wonderful blessings probably you'd had. For, oh, long time. Yeah. By God's oh, grace, yeah. because Jesus love and the Holy Spirit working. <laughs> that's wonderful. Isn't it precious? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, it's so dear, isn't it? It is. Glory! Amen. I wish everybody could be right up here with us now. It'd be wonderful. Yeah, if everyone back in there and over here is right up here with them now, it'd encourage them very much. It's encouraged me. Oh, yeah. Just to be with you. Oh, it's wonderful. I'm so thankful for that. Yeah. I'm very grateful for this privilege. Oh, we love yes. you very much. Yes. We, try we, to we want to thank you. We need it so much. And we fall so short of that, too. Well, I... I don't pray near enough. I come so far short. But God's been so good. Oh, yeah. So precious. Hallelujah. Praise, Praise the Lord. It's so wonderful. I will thank Just thank you. Prayed yesterday and came to pass today. Oh, I was just hoping just to get close to you one time. Just one time. Yes, one time. Right, just fine. maybe to shake your hand, not nothing like this. Uh, praise the Lord, he gave you more than you oh, had. Well, he does it. He does it. <laughs> Hallelujah. He always gives us. He gives us more than we had thought. Praise his name. Praise Amen. Amen. As we're faithful. Now, all that more than we thought depends upon our faithfulness before. Mm -hmm. oh, our right. faith before. <laughs> It's See that? <laughs> Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> As we pray and are faithful and true, even though it's dark most of the time, you see, then the Lord in due season comes and gives us what is, is ours. With, with uh, a beautiful dividend and abounding love and grace. Lord, mm -hmm. courage you. Comfort you while we're away apart. And he'll comfort you. Thank 
Oh, that was precious. I just felt like all of you were in on that if you wanted to be. <laughs> Weren't we privileged in Jesus to have this real time with this precious son? Praise the Lord. And when I walked in this morning, I hadn't any idea of the scripture I've been speaking about. There is another scripture on farther down I had, but not what I've already been speaking of. How many seemed in your heart to get a little bit of what just went on up here? I want you to look, dear ones, look around. Just the Holy Spirit had to do this. He did it for Jesus' glory, his love for all the precious fatherless, the orphans, the widows. Hallelujah. Oh, how thankful we are for this. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind. This is the area that determines how much of a load you may carry. So if you're weak in this area of the loins, you're not able to carry much of anything. In fact, you can't even carry yourself. So we can't carry spiritual burdens, spiritual cares, that God move upon our heart uh, to carry the burden of the church. The burden of the church is so great that it's beyond words to tell you how great it is. We pray for all churches and all ministers because it's very serious. See, the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God is within us as we follow Jesus and are converted and transformed by the blood of Jesus and follow God. The kingdom of God is within us. And only as we gird up the lines of our mind, the soul, and the spirit are we able to follow. See, we can't even move our spiritual limb if the line isn't exactly right in that spiritual body. Everything has to be just right in all the tissues and the fibers of the spiritual truth of the love of the aspiration of the vision of God, of the love of God and the love of our enemies. I say if we don't have, if we don't love our enemies and love God, you see, then the spiritual line that uh, holds together uh, the ability of moving onward is not apparent, it's not an evidence. So therefore we stay where we are. That's why we're on the siding. Uh, when we went to the great, on the Great Northern from Chicago uh, to Portland, Oregon, they put us on the siding. We'd be on the siding quite a while. And it's just the same trees and same cows and same hills. Everything's the same. So we don't, we don't have any, any variation. But when you walk with God, there's variation. It's just on and on and on. Because we're not on the siding. We're on the main line. Now, on the main line... It's where we gird up the loins of our soul, our mind, and we're sober, and we're obedient, and we're yielded. Then we travel. We travel with him slowly, not, not in a race. But he leads us within us. See, that operates in my heart. He leads us by his spirit. And this is what all the world's trying to find in money and pleasures, and accumulation and station and prestige. It's right here. There's such consolation, there's such comfort, there is such communion, there is such wonderfulness in Christ as we wait in this sacred place. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, that the Holy Spirit of God, Jesus abiding, with his mind in us. I say, unless we have the mind of Christ, this will not occur. Let this mind be in you, who was also in Christ Jesus. He said, let 
L-E-P, let. See, what does that depend on? It depends upon the inner heart and the will of the desire of the interior life. We usually have what we will and what we want and what we desire if we persevere on long enough. But in this way, we simply rest on the promise and gird up the loins of our mind, our soul, our spirit, being sober, being thoughtful, being courageous, being encouraged, being steadfast, being faithful, trusting, rejoicing, praising God, praising the Lord, and treating our brothers and sisters as Jesus would have us so be with them. That's why I strive to do with my children, my wife, and my grandchildren, and my neighbors, and my enemies. That's what the Lord has taught me, and I'm only a beginner in this. But it is a great inner consolation. I'm just thinking how God helped me to love Brother Mark. Well, how God helps us to love one another. That Jesus loves us. In him, in him. Being careful. A man keeps spotless. Don't put your arms around any woman, unless it's your mother, your wife, and your sister. Be also careful because men are weak. And we need to be careful because there's a quite, a, quite a regulation in the loin area that uh, has to do with our direction. And we must be holy before the Lord in order to maintain spiritual balance so that we will not drift into certain spirits of darkness or of evil or of lust or desire of the flesh. He wants our loins girt about with his holiness, with his truth, his purity. And you know one of the most wonderful ways to have them girt about is by his communion, his fellowship. That comes through obedience and the blessing of his presence and dwelling. When we drift from that, then there is a likelihood of our yielding to temptation. This is good, isn't it? Because the Lord is helping us. This is simple, but it's true. And maybe there's only two or three or four, there's only about four that can hear maybe very well at times. But I trust that you'll press with all your might to get it in your heart. Because when Jesus talked of old, we just listened, but we didn't hear. And we have to persevere, see. Unless we're persevering as hard as with all there is within us, we'll just get this a little bit, just in fragment. And let's press with all there is within us to hear this. Gird up the loins of our mind. The spiritual soul the spiritual man. He said, be sober. So he wants all of us to hear, not just a handful, not just a few. He wants all of us to hear in our heart. And I know this takes the Holy Spirit to help us to do this. But as we persevere, as we're longing, then he's able to get this into our hearts more. About sobriety and holiness and being holy before him and walking in truth. That should encourage us. Yes, that should encourage us to know that we've got the press to do this. We just can't, we can't just say, well, that's wonderful and I like it and all. We've got to really get in there and get it. Because there's powers that keep us from it. Powers of the air. Powers of the weakness of man. So we persevere to obtain the goal and God's gift to us. Does this help us to persevere? I trust to be encouraged to really persevere and really do God's will and not be discouraged and not draw back. Be sober. Sobriety. Cautiousness in our behavior. And hope to the end for the grace that is brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the hope to the end. 
and the hope to the end. Now you see before this is gird up the loins of your mind, be sober. Now that all is the foundation for and the hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that precious? Yes. And the hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children. As obedient children. That means from the time that we're a little child, we're taught obedience. If we haven't been taught obedience and submission, well then it's very difficult for us in this life. If we're not chastened when we're a little child and they scream and yell and throw tantrums and we don't know how to, to uh, teach them and they don't obey very well, then we're cheated out of many marvelous things that God has for us in his kingdom. So we have to die out a great death in order to come to this place as Jesus works with your heart and mind. And hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ as obedient children. That's it, as obedient children, obeying what God says to do at all times. As obedient children. I said to John and Martha, when April Marie would cry rather frantically or very, very hard, and she was just a few days old, um, she would take her milk so fast, and I said, just, just don't let her take it that fast, too hard on her. Just take the bottle from her and let her rest a while. Well, she would just scream and yell, and it was, it was that. You just could, you'd have to see it to believe it. But she was just a baby, just a few days old. 